everybody. I'm doing a 30 minute session for a client. I'm gonna be sharing distance energy healing and psychic wisdom to transform their life. It can also transform your life. If you feel a resonance with these goals, I recommend you stick around and reap a reward of healing and transformation for you too. If any of you are interested in exploring a session with me, please visit my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. I'm also on Patreon at patreon.com slash abbynormalswisdomquest. All right. Thank you so much for the opportunity to connect with you. Thank you so much for sharing with us here on YouTube. I'm going to read your goals out loud and then we'll get started. All right. So you say, I want to focus energy healing on my marriage, on the two of us clearing any individual imbalances and enhancing our bonding connection with one another. If we could do half of the session to focus on me and half on my husband, but to blend the healing together, that would be great. We've been through a lot over the years and I want us both to feel a sense of renewal and resurrection in ourselves and each other. Thank you, Abby. Okay. All right. Marriage is a commitment. I just feel that that's the first thing that really hits me here is that sensation that marriage is a commitment. And we have two individual people that are committed to one another. I'm wanting to work on the individual, you and then your husband, and any kind of imbalances that you're both working through in your individual lives but then blending that together to really harmonize your marriage and your relationship with one another. And we're talking about time here as well. Time, we grow, we change. Sometimes we grow away and then grow back together again. And so there's commitment here. Wanting to achieve renewal and resurrection in your individual selves, but then with each other. Hmm. It's really beautiful. Okay. I'm going to relax and get tuned in here. All right. So let me see. Let me feel this out. So we want to do half for you, half for your husband. All right. So we'll focus on you first. Okay. What's the most meaningful wisdom and healing I can share with you today in correspondence to um, healing and blending a sort of goal of of really enhancing your connection with your husband just in each other. Just like we really want to really bring out something bright here in the hearts of you both. Hmm. Okay. This is a bit disorienting. I feel you're separating yourself. And that's that's the first thing that comes to me. I feel like I'm in a closet with no clothes in the closet and the door is shut. And this, this words, um, you're separating yourself, it keeps coming up. And things feel dry, okay? Feel dry. And what's sad is you're looking at the handle to the closet and you want to come out, but you can't. And you sit down and your back is against the door and you're looking at the empty closet. It's supposed to be full of so many things, but it's only you are here and nothing else and nothing more. I don't know why, but I, I feel a bit mischievous and I have a match and I toss the match in this very dry closet and it starts to go up in a blaze very quickly. Like whatever these walls are and, and everything that's in here, whatever the floor is made of, it's all getting burned. But really this burn is to get you to come out of this closet. I'm not sure what the meaning of the closet is yet. But it's somehow um, you coming out from inside of yourself in a new way. It's a gift. So let's say we don't, we don't know how to define it yet, but we make parameters all the time. That we exist within parameters. Parameters of our comfort zone, and we don't even know what those comfort zones are. 
So something of your own mysterious parameter is keeping you um, inside a closet. It's holding you back. You're holding yourself back from something. And by this closet getting burned down, it's giving you the freedom then to not have any parameters here. Now you're exposed. You need to, these parameters need to go away and you need to be exposed. And I feel like it's, it's love. Like... I know sometimes when you really need someone in your life and you just, it takes so much to bring someone deep into your heart. And maybe it's, maybe I, I see a scene, I see a scene where myself, let's say I'm sitting at a table and I, I see all these people around me and I, I hear all these superficial conversations and there's something calling out for my heart for just someone to sit down and someone to have a deep and meaningful exchange with me. But I can't seem to find that someone. And then there is somebody that comes and it's not quite as deep and as meaningful as I had hoped. And I'm sharing a cup of coffee with this person and it really isn't reaching the root, you know, of the core of my soul. It's, it's actually not even coming close. I'm more like in the swimming in the baby pool with this person and I feel like I'm swimming in the deep end and they're still in the baby pool. And then I have to ask myself, can I still feel love here? Can I still feel relief here? Can I still feel breath? Can I feel re rejuvenation here? And then this person disappears and I'm all alone at the table with this coffee and myself. And now I'm looking at the parameters of how I'm letting people in or not letting anybody in at all. And how I'm segregating myself with just myself. And I'm not I'm opening my table up to many. It remains small and I remain alone at the table. Man, I hug you. But I can't reach you because I'm not in this scene. I'm just watching it. And I can't appear in this scene for you. All I can do is watch you and try to help somehow from far away. Let's bring your husband in, shall we? Okay. Shall we do that? Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> That's fun. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why this is really jamming up my throat. <sighs> huge shift in energy here <sighs> so no that's not what we're gonna do you're gonna remain in kind of a i guess it's a pretty gardeny type space a nice little cafe here there's people there's probably i don't know a good 15 tables outside and nice sunny day nice weather and you're all alone at the table drinking the coffee so you're here okay now i'm gonna go visit your husband separately okay <laughs> that's how i'm supposed to do this okay i really have to send you away so that way i'm not disoriented and trying to mix you both together just yet it seems like doing this individually is best Weird. It, it, totally different um, scene. He's actually seems to be trying to plant a seed in an underground uh, space. And the seeds actually, what all it's doing is getting infected. And there's a weird um, bump on the ground. Let me set the scene a little better here. We're literally underground in a dirt environment there's no sunlight, there's no warmth, there's nobody here. Your husband is planting a seed into a corner as far away from the expansion of the space, not in the center, and it's not rounded, but in like a little corner and planting a seed. And then somehow the seed though is building a bump, but the bump is full of infection. And he's tending to an infection, trying to grow something beautiful from an infected space and this is hard on you but this is hard on him too and it feels like it goes without explanation or answers for you both almost like maybe being in your separate worlds makes this easier but you need to be in the same world you need to be in the exact same world 
I tell him, please, 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 please don't, don't be here anymore in the dark in this corner tending to an infection and you're trying to grow some sort of garden here and it's just, it's pus is coming out of the ground. Please, like, no, I want to show you another place. He says, no, I don't, I don't want to leave this place. Oh. Because I'm planning in his mind a scene, there you are at the table in a sunny, and I say, but she's drinking coffee alone. She really could use a company. He says, no, I must do some thinking. And I say, what does the seed mean to you and the infection mean to you? starts to cry. He says, this is the closest I can get to you. And I tried to grow something beautiful in what grow, what had grown pain. And I'm defeated. It's almost like always remaining with a, with a bar very low in a place of defeat. And in a way, I don't know that, I don't know that they're, this is imbalanced. So that this is, yes, this is imbalanced. But I tell him to, why not, why not stop growing something in an affection though? Why don't we just acknowledge what's here first? Because for you, it's loneliness. For him, it's trying to reach you and never being able to reach you. And somehow this interaction with this infection is, this has to be remedied. I mean, this is forever. If this isn't remedied, this is forever. But part of him is completely at a loss here on how to remedy this. But also there's so much shame and guilt involved in this too. So not wanting to walk away from it either because of the exposure or the embarrassment, he would have to face himself here. Okay, I'm going to bring you into his world. Let's try it this way. Is what is separating him from you? Can you walk between worlds? You don't want to walk down there. You want nothing to do with it. Why, why wouldn't he want to come into this beautiful environment with the warmth of the sun and all of this, these people are enjoying their, their day, we're, we're having a nice breakfast, something like this, having some coffee, and just connecting with one another. Just connect with me. Just connect with me deeply. Just connect with me. Please, just connect with me. I snap my fingers and I disappear this space and he's going to appear in the chair with you because he needs to be exposed to everything that makes him feel uncomfortable, I guess, about himself. But maybe you become a mirror of that too. So there's too much to face. My guides want me to go back to the closet where you are hiding in the parameters. Because in a way, you both are kind of separating yourselves from each other when really what we need to do is bring you both together and start um, reconnecting, you could say, um, where the parameters are built around this table and you both sit at this table and the parameters are built around this, okay? And we don't know anything about a pus and a seed in the dark corner of this lowly place. And we don't know anything about the empty dry closet that got set ablaze. We don't know anything about these things anymore because the parameters must built, be built around you both, okay? This is causing my heart to want to, like, I feel like I, I'm going to vomit out some, some sort of splintery material and it's quite thick chunks of it and it's getting lodged in my throat and it's, it's pointless or it's hopeless or it's not going to happen and it's already been decided. So no, we can't build the parameters around this table and each other. No, that's not going to happen. No, 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 no. We, we don't know anything about the past, let's say. We only know about right now. 
Let's get to know each other as though we'd never met before. That's how we're going to start something fresh. So I bring you both out something to eat. And I guess I'm kind of like a server right now, like a waiter or something. And, and there's like, a, I guess a dipping, like a bread with like a cool like olive oil and some spices or something like dipping sauce. It, it's, it seems like it's turning into maybe a... Um, like a, a Italian restaurant. It's got an outdoors, beautiful outdoors feel to it. It's like a cafe. I'm not seeing breakfast here. I'm seeing bread with the dipping, a dipping sauce. And it's fancy. You're starting to make eye contact with one another. And it's a bit strange. There's many things that you do like about each other. There's many things that you like about each other. This is actually quite wonderful, to be honest. Because the one thing you can both say is that you're not alone. Ask him if there's something that he would never say then maybe it would be good to say, and then you can talk about it. Hmm. I don't know why he's, he's sort of standing up and then he's walking away from the table, like, he, like he's thinking and pacing away from the table. Hmm. Let's give him some time here. He wants you to go, it's kind of like hang gliding. Uh, it seems like you want to go, I also see a, a boat and then there's a, like a person on a parachute in the back. Um, I see it's a fun a boat adventure and then a par parasailing, I think is what it's called. And maybe some jet skis. It's quite um, fun. It's glamorous even. It feels like we're in a Kind of a fancy hotel by the beach, um, ocean here. Or mingling with other people, actually. We're doing something fun and outdoorsy. So we're going to follow through with this. We're going to follow through the, with this because this is, this is what he is expressing. And so let's bring you into the scene with him. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you can do this. You can have fun. Yeah, you know what? You need to remember your um, youth. <laughs> you, you remembering your youth and doing some um, fun, youthful things. It's really going to be just like let go of all the responsibility and the work and um, crossing the T's and dotting the I's. Like It seems like it's okay to be 20 um, for a week or something <laughs> every year. <laughs> it, it, like to do something that's really youthful and fun, actually. Even, uh, I see even doing like um, life building skills together, like, a, like going to a, I don't know, like a, a, a retreat of some kind where you both do yoga, you do, um, I don't know, I just, I see it, it's, it's uh, in a beautiful environment like Hawaii and um, there's an instructor, there's many different types of instructors, you're learning different techniques, learning different things that interest you, but it's kind of, maybe it's a spiritual or metaphysical, maybe it's um, athletic, maybe it's um, both of those things. But you're actually building a relationship through building experiences together where you do them side by side, where you do them together. Honestly, it's making him go grow, glow really bright right now because what we're doing is we're giving him the imagery, the sensation and the feeling of um, being alive and doing fun things with you, actually getting um, away and doing a little vacation, a little trip. And this is, this is functional. This is actually functional. And we're not seeing any conflict here, okay? We're seeing this is smooth. This is um, bright. This is all, everything we could ever imagined. This is wonderful. This is reconnecting the bond. This is reconnecting the wires. This is um, making the heart glow. Okay, let's see about you, though. Let's see what you have to say. Because this is for him right now, okay? This is for him and his world. 
I mean, at any time there could be argument. At any time there could be a complete desecration of this like very pleasant vision, but we're not going there. We're just going to let it be simple and innocent and beautiful and perfect in its own right, okay? We're going to let it be really um, happy, really just meaningful, okay? Okay, now tell me, what, do, what would you like to say? What would you like to share? <sighs> okay, this is, um, no, he needs to participate in this. It's, uh, this is a multidimensional facility <laughs> and it's made up of, um, like 10,000 floors. It's a multidimensional shape. It's like a sacred ge geometry and, um, this is a highly, highly, highly complex. And you would not, I don't even know what to make of this. So people come here and they are rearranged, basically. I mean, okay, let's, let's see where this goes. I find it interesting. I mean, I see somebody walk in here and they're being completely rearranged, which is to awaken their mind, they awaken their senses. There's philosophies, there's sciences, there's the technology, there's physics, there's alien beings, there's, um, there's deep, 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 there's every memory in all times of all versions of Earth and every star in the infinite universe. And on 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 and on. It's like a billion trillion things going on in here, and it's so fascinating. It's a billion freaking levels of fascinating in here. And you are talking to people who are um, really intelligent. You are interacting, having like really deep and complex um, exchanges. And you're encouraging him to be part of this and then to talk about what it meant to him afterward. And it's almost like um, Barbie and Ken meet, I don't know, the university, like, of Harvard or something like, like Barbie and Ken Playhouse, Harvard University. You know, it's like, um, okay. So simplicity, complexity. You, you like simplicity though too, and then he likes complexity as well. Otherwise, you wouldn't be together. But no, he, he so. We're working on healing, okay? We're working on <sighs> blending. We're working on valuing you as individual people, then valuing you as together, and then valuing the parameters of your space is together and not separated. And we're not, I mean, let's, let's, let's be real here. This closet wasn't that complicated. It, it, it really sucked in there, to be honest. And, and that underground space was a, basically a prison. It was self-imprisoning. It was, it was a, a problem without a solution. This was just, let's just burn it to the ground and burn me with it. Like, well, now we're trying to reconcile, okay? We're trying to create light. We're trying to create harmony within the heart. We're trying to bring you closer together in a genuine way, okay? Okay, so Okay. I'm looking at everything right now, but I'm not sure what to say right now. I will say that when he um participates in something um, where it, you, it really stimulates every part of your imagination, of your mind, of, of your soul, um, in an environment where you feel truly connected to everything, like a cosmic connection with everything, um, with people who genuinely value um, that meaning as well. There's so much meaning here. And this is meaningful too, but it, it's, um, it feels like a reduction in the, the depth of it, I suppose. Um, yes, it's good, it's meaningful, but there's a, a, 
if, if we were on the scale of one to 10 of the deepest um, that we could go, this cosmic university space is like a 10 and this is like Barbie Ken's playhouse is a one. Like, and so we really need to raise the, the volume of, um, of, of what, what makes you both shine bright. Why did you come together in the first place? Maybe you wanted simple joys and he wanted um, simple joys like simple love like um you don't need this complex cosmic thing you just want simple simple connection simple like love is is not a word or it's not like a a rhetoric of some kind it's a sensation it's a it's a, a working through through whatever comes in life with hands held tight um, embracing one another intimacy that's not complicated then what is his avoidance then that also matters to him too I guess we're still peeling the layers of the onion here as a real true um, riddle of the relationship and what you're willing to expose to one another and how you're willing to grow. I'm just going to have you sit, continue to sit at the table and I'm going to have you look into each other's eyes for a while. And we're going to just take away the sounds of these two spaces now. And just take it away, make it just disappear, because all we have are the parameters of the table and one another. That's it. And we're just going to, you're going to hold each other's hands, okay, and then look into each other's eyes. This is really going to help energetically just stimul stimulate the reconnection with one another, okay? That, that's what we're doing here. See how much more interesting this is getting? Okay, I will say it does get to the next level of interesting. So you, you were looking into his eyes and I see his face change and it looks like it's um, kind of robotic, like um, parts of the face push out and then move around and I see like kind of robotic gears and things and eyes looking around. And I see, um, I hear springs popping and things are coming loose. They're not um, solid. It has to, it, it, there's constant repair, repairs needed. And fixing, maintenance. Okay, let's let's go through his eyes and let's look into your eyes, okay? And I hear that he says that she will never love me. Hmm. And I see that your, your appearance looks like you're in a skin and you can't break the seal of the skin and it's suffocating you. And you're crying on the inside. I say this is so healthy. This is incredible. I, I really like these raw looks at one another. You know, nothing to hide. I mean, when you're married, you're naked with e each other. Like you, you literally represent nothing to hide. There's, there's nothing to hide. I 
ask him if there's something he thinks that something that comes to him that that could genuinely reach you that only he would hold the key to being able to do that for you I think he starts to fall apart like an arm falls an eyeball pops out like he just falls into a big mound of pieces and he says I must put myself together again I say, I know that you know how to do this. Because guess what? I believe in you. He says that he wants someone to believe in him. He wants to believe in himself. He says, that is a kind of, it's a real, a real thing. He needs, he needs to believe in himself. He says to you that I'm going to work on believing in myself. And I'm going to work on being strong enough to not fall apart. Or to learn how to hold myself together. To learn how to be stronger in myself. He says that I feel like you would want to hear me say that or to hear me dedicate my life to working on this and myself is it my gift to you and our marriage something this is the weirdest thing but that weird skin sack like breathes into your body totally disappears and you feel like you're there's flowers growing all over you you're like full of flowers and fragrance and he starts to cry and he says is that the real you and you say, when you bring the light, when you, when, it's almost like you bring the light to me and I love you so much. It's like you, you love him. You, you, you see, you, there's something um, pure when, when you're able to see him and see through and for him to see himself, you both thrive, um, indefinitely thrive with one another. And it's like, if, if he could say that, it would, it's like all the sounds disappear. And all there is in your eyes and your heart and your soul is him. As it always was. And if that's all he has to do to bring you back to life. And look at, look at the sounds and the harmonies. And it doesn't matter if it's Ken and Barbie's dream house or it's freaking cosmic Harvard or something. It it's it's each other. It's the parameters of the table and you both you you are you have access to each other. Genuinely genuinely so. He starts he starts to change without language. It's like he's He's not a robot, he's becoming a man, like a real human man. And you're like a garden, you're like flowers growing all over around you. And you say that I want to be free to be myself with you. And I want to show you the gifts of who I am, because I love you. And there's a sensuality to the fragrance of the flowers. And it's, it's like... Um, Sounds like, like he'd never be worthy of you or something. If if he's struggling to say, I, you know, I, to believe in himself, let's say, then how could he believe um, that he could have such a beautiful woman? I mean, you you represent the most beautiful, stunning flowers and bloom and the best fragrance ever. And how could he ever have access to that? How could Ken and Barbie ever have access to the cosmic Harvard? Like, um, it's almost like. You want to, you want him to see um, how truly special, like how loved he is for the way he is. But you're like um, an unattainable, um, exquisite, special thing. It's like he has to really raise the bar of himself. But you, are you wanting to save him or rescue him? You want to save him? By, by loving him in ways that he could not love himself and showing him that love can be there for him. 
It doesn't have to, that it can be simple and genuine. You have to work on this breath between each other because when you separate from one another, it's not going to be good. You're going to have to come as close as you possibly can and start enjoying life in each other's um, space, okay? As though that is the whole reason why you were married in the first place is because you really thrive in each other's space. You really thrive when you are together, not when you are apart. And I see when you are apart, you actually do not thrive apart. You actually thrive together. But there's challenge to that too. The challenge of thriving together is worth it more than apart if you are married, right? Because that's a decision and then from that decision we, we adhere to it and then we grow around it, we grow within it, we go th grow through it. We grow in oneness with each other. So what is, so this is really solid. I will say there's no breaking of the parameters of this um, engagement here because what the energy is that we're working with is something of pure, pure love and pure um, connection with one another. Nothing else in the way there. Whether you're able to achieve it in the present day, right now, right here now, um, it's happening in the energy world inside both of your hearts. And it's transmuting any any nakedness or shame or that type of sensation of you know the ugliness of who I am is not good enough for you and then um, how I'm suffocating by this relationship and I'm all alone and there's just a lack in the the exchanges the deep exchanges so it's, it's we have the ring of something something pure and genuine and what marriage is really all about is soulmates seeing through each other so i'm just i'm placing um your true beauty okay into his heart so that you are truly one with one another and who he is um, in all of his gifts and maybe his gifts are um, how he is working through the challenge of his relationship with himself and that can be a gift too and it seems as though he wants to meet you eye to eye but it, it is struggling because he um, he has to raise the bar for himself but that would be hard for you because you will always be kind of held the bar lower than you would ever hold it but yet you held it there in the first place because you loved, because love was more important than where the bar was set. And so it, it truly, him saying, I'm going to work on believing in myself is like music to your ears. That is the most purest form of love because it's him choosing to value himself, which is raising the bar which is what you are actually a physical representation of, of why he has every right to start believing in himself. And when he is doing that, he is strong in who he is and he has charisma. He has a genuine love of self and is, is improving everything in his life. So him looking into your eyes and saying, I, I'm going to work on believing in me, music to your ears. I'm placing that part of who he is in your heart. Because you could say initially there wouldn't be, it. when you first meet somebody, you don't, you don't know all these deep things yet. You haven't lived a bunch of years together yet. And then you discover it in time, these mysteries start to reveal themselves and they become um, the baggage that you e either carry or you learn how to let go of and you grow with one another.
You ask if this, if this could be real, like what we've achieved thus far. And I say, well, it is real. What makes you doubt it? You say, I, it's like I have every reason to doubt it. I say, well, I can put you back in the closet. You want to go there? I put you back at a lonely table, bunch of people around, nobody's here but you, put you there. Because that, that's what, we're, what I'm walking into when I first explore you and your marriage. And I, I feel like your heart is actually wanting to um, succeed at something here. With what marriage is all about is genuine love and working together. And you seem to know this recipe, but yet something is unachievable about it. And we must believe in something here. So we're going to take this table, we're going to get it out of the way, and then we're going to just embrace. So you are embracing him, he is embracing you, and the world is watching. <laughs> oh, weird how that changes things. He's like, yes, mm -hmm, the world is watching. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're like, that's not what this is about. <laughs> this is about, this is not about the world. This is just about our connection. It's like, I make it so it's just you and him now. better for him when the world is watching when you're both hugging hmm and then that throws you off because that's not what this is about for you so then if you have to go to a private place to have a genuine hugging exchange where it's not about anybody but each other Okay, let's let's follow this through. Okay, I might, I actually want to follow this through here for just a minute because um, when we go back to the scene and everybody's watching, there's the the whole world starts to applaud. Okay, for some reason, and he's like really proud of himself to have you. But I say it's not about, um, I guess, being congratulated by the world with what you have. It's, it's about you having it, that congratulations for yourself inside yourself. So when I take the sound, I turn the volume down and I make everybody disappear and it's just you and him. He can do this too. Yeah, he can. So it's odd, it's like it helps his confidence, it helps him to believe in himself, but it's not um, deep enough, it's not genuine, the, the right place to get that um, type of medicine. This is more like ego instead of heart. And I just see you become like a thin ember to this ego. It's interesting because where you you could say tug of war like push and pull, like um, you you, you could say um, <laughs> this tug of war is gonna have to find a way to to work together, not be on two, two opposing sides, but actually just get rid of the rope and stop playing that game and actually um, st start working on this. Relentlessly so. One thing that is nice here that I'm going to close with is that I have got you to look into each other's eyes and to communicate with one another and to just let it be expressed 
and I'm bringing you into each other's space, which is bringing you into each other's energy. I wanted to close with a hug where it was really embracing of one another. It is genuinely embracing, but it, it sparks new meaning to the marriage. But you are in each other's hearts. And that's what I have to share about this. Just let the deep meaning um, un unfold for you. Let it unfold for him in, in its own way. Because we impact each other through these exchange of energy, through the exchange of, of choice and caring. Um, we exchange energy. And I know it's going to bring a blossom of something new to open up. And it's going to be good. It's going to be full of light. And it's going to be a next level. Thank you very much for the experience and thank you everybody for watching. I hope you all have an amazing day.